Oh, jeepers. Electronic voice. Yes. Excellent. Okay. Uh, a painter is not well known in England, but I think the Americans will probably know. The name is Red Grooms. And uh, he painted a lot of uh, city scenes and this kind of thing, um, New York included. And this one's called, the painting's called Don't Walk. And whether you've been to America or not, um, you've seen this things at intersections, walk or don't walk. And this is a painting of, it says don't walk and people are walking everywhere. <clears throat> Red Grooms ca <clears throat> uh, captured this in 1963. And in the painting, there's just one single policeman, <laughs> okay? So, he wears the silver buttoned uniform of, of authority. The ba bright badge of righteousness adorns his cap. A don't walk sign means walkers shouldn't even consider running. And he'll never see eye to eye with anyone who ignores the rules. Walkers, he believes, are anarchists. They wear everyday clothes and hats. And one way or another, he will make them conform. Where there's lawlessness, he'll not be the one to be ignored. He'll not have people walking or running when autos need to move. But now they've started walking taller folk in autos appear to be getting smaller and walkers are wearing bigger coats while autos seem to yield and as his truncheon starts to feel more slender than it did before he decides it's with the anarchists he will walk <laughs> okay okay so We'll stay with ekphrastics for a minute and we'll come back to England. And uh, this is an Italian painting in London back in 1747. Yes, it's the wonderful Canaletto. And his painting then of the Thames and city of London from Richmond House. So this is my take on it. It's a huge canvas. Though they form large portions of the painting, it's not about the river or the sky, but about fire and history. And Sir Christopher focusing his eye on the brands and ashes after the flames had died. And it's about mathematics and Sir Christopher's compelling mind and how it came to raise the great dome of St. Paul's. Then it's about that cathedral dominating the mercantile world and the boundless energy of that sir. 50 or more spires he raised. Only then it becomes about a painter capturing those steeples applause and about us hearing in his painting the ringing of the great city's bells. Um, now we're coming fairly close to here and uh, Goodwood in fact just up the road from Chichester for those uh, on Zoom or not sure where Chichester or Goodwood is but up in Goodwood there's the uh, Cass Sculpture Park uh, or it's run by the Cass Sculpture Foundation and uh, as part of the South Downs Poetry Festival, um, before Barry took over, uh, I was uh, one of three or four poets who spent a day there. we writing poems about the, some of the sculptures we saw and reading them to people, who to visitors, only if they wanted us to. We, we didn't force ourselves on them. <laughs> Like I'm going to force this one on you now. But I guess you want to hear it. Anyway, it's called Arriving Here. It's called Grand Peregrine. And I've called it Arriving Here because 
because peregrine, though we've got peregrine falcons and all that sort of stuff in at the cathedral here in Chichester and many other cathedrals now, peregrine actually means something that wanders. And this is a piece of Indian granite and it's wandered here and it's been carved by Stephen Cox and it was erected at Cass in 2009. So, bringing its shape to stand alone, bringing its darkness to cool or warm caressing hands, bringing its textured curvatures to engage our imaginings and its presence to store among re remembrances of other carved stones bringing its shadow to kneel first before the sun and then the moon, inviting us here because it inspires. Okay. Um, ekphrastic poetry. Yes, it also refers to music works of art, and there's one in this book on, um, on uh, Bach's Toccata and Fugue, but my, uh, I have very Catholic tastes in music, and I have uh, great love for many musicians. And this is bass line of Love, O oh Love, which is Lionel Rich's song, which many of you know. But the important part to me about this is the brilliant bass line on it. And it's by a guy who's known as Reddy Freddy Washington. And he's one of the greatest session bass players around in America. And he's now currently permanent bass player with the band Steely Dan. But this is on uh, Love Oh Love, Lionel Riches. It was the double bass's peaceful clucking throughout air on a G-string. Made me ache to hear again, ready Freddie Washington playing his bass line on Love, Oh Love. To sense him listening intensely to the intro strings and voices singing, waiting to pluck his first notes, to lift the words and reshape the theme. No more children off to war. And that's the theme of the song. Then to feel him driving it deeper into my soul. That's how Ready Freddy underpins the song. Listen again to him, syncopating with the words, playing soft, then loud, carrying the message home, making it clear beyond the end. Now, it's quite a surprise when this happened. This is an ekphrastic poem, again. Sorry to bore you with so much ekphrastic poetry. And this is based on music and painting, all in one. In 2000, my favourite song of the year was Yellow by Coldplay. And then a few years later, well, not so long ago, I was looking through... Uh, some works of Kodinsky's and uh, I came across Yellow Accompaniment and you know he's quite an expressionist sort of painter and I sort of saw in his painting an orchestra mm -hmm. and indeed Kodinsky was himself a concert pianist as well and he referred to his piano as his palette. I needed nothing more than to put this poem together and it turned out to be about my wife somehow, but <laughs> there we go. Yellow accompaniment. The conductor has an eye for you, signals the leader to play my theme for you. The honeyed potpourri of you to which the first strings add shades of blue, the inner soul of you. While the seconds spin a saffron prayer for you, then, full-voiced and muted, brasses reflect how the sun, 
moon and stars shine for you, while the double basses pluck their strings as if sands of time carry no weight for you, and the harpist arrows her notes right to the heart of you. But the flautist, who's heard all about you, plays that flitting brimstone butterfly, who from time to time is certainly you, while the cellists who know you for your mellowness play the outward globe of you. My palette is my piano, and here I start to sing as the sun begins its morning flight, as I recall that citrus tang of you. Okay, so most of I'm almost through, just two more to do, but most of the poems tonight have been from this. This is my current uh, poetry collection. And I'm pleased to say I've not got many copies left. Mm -hmm. And you're all lucky tonight because a copy can be yours for five pounds only instead of 11 pounds, which is the cover price. So I'm just getting rid of my stock now. And if three people want them, they're going to be lucky because I've got some previous to hand out with those first three. So anyway, a couple of newer poems now. Um, not gone into a collection yet. Um, so I'm going to go to Walt Whitman next, another great inspiration of mine. I, I have two favorite American poets. One is Walt Whitman, and the other one is currently Billy Collins. And for me, Billy Collins can do no wrong. And I ran a workshop, and Christine was here. I did one with Christine, and yes. And in fact, I'd done two for, yeah, I'd done two, and you weren't at the last one. But the first one I did was, uh, on Walt Whitman's Crossing Brooklyn Ferry. And um, out of that, I got a poem. I, I write a lot of Tanka. Now, Tanka, for those who don't know, are short five line poems. And the great bulk of my Tanka have actually been published in America rather than in Eng than England. So, uh, which is, makes me very happy. Um, so Walt Whitman, very long, lengthy lines, wandering all over the place. Tanker are short, brief things. And so I have to distill uh, over time and reduce these down to this set of five tanker. And it's called As the Sun Goes Down. And Whitman's original title for this for crossing brooklyn ferry was the sundown poem so this is as the sun goes down in gatherings we play our own roles some voices loud some voices small on the street we walk apart from others sight hearing life love are the ties between us. Many cross from shore to shore on the ferry boat. Together we witness the lowering of the sun. Before clouds gather to close the day, we're all dazzled by the river's blood red spirit. Approaching home in the twilight, I think of others and strange questions stir within me. Okay, so. This is the last one I've prepared. <laughs> so uh, at the weekend, I was at the Poets Society conference down in um, Glastonbury, actually. And the Poets Society is mainly focused on the Poets Brothers, John Cooper Poets, who spent most of his life lecturing in America in the early, 
20th century. And Llewellyn Powers and T.F. Powers, who was a bit of a stay at home. And I was reading recently his uh, novel called Mr. Tasker's Job, Gods, Mr. Tasker's Gods. And I came across this sentence. To her, the silence had been in itself a prayer, the deepest, the holiest, the most illuminating. So I thought silence. And I was back in America and I was on the edge of the, I was on the rim of the Grand Canyon alone by myself as the sun was going down. So that's in this silence. Its utter depth and width can only leave one standing on this canyon's rim entirely without speech. Its walls stacked so high with their blendings of colors could only have been stilled after ages of momentous histories. And the river's roar coursing its floor can do nothing but be lost in the sheer vastness of its void. And from this height, that river seems not to be moving. And there is a presence here, moving and unseen, untouchable maybe, but adamant in its feeling. And if anywhere, this is where one's unspoken words, if listened for, will be heard. Thank you. Thank you, Jeffrey. Thank you very much. Um, is that on the screen? Yeah. No, it's on, no, it's on this one. We need to take that off. Okay, so um, we normally take, when we've got a featured reader, we normally take a brief break just to replenish stuff. If you want to drink, get, get another thing, something to drink or something to eat from the cafe, and we'll reconvene in about three minutes. So very quick, very brief <laughs> run out there. If we said five, we'd say eight. So yeah, eight. right. <laughs> See, there is logic in that. Uh, so we'll be reconvening very soon. Uh, please make sure you've signed up if you want to read. Um, you guys on Zoom, if uh, you want to read and you don't think I've got your name, let me know. Yell. Um, and we'll take it from there. Alexandra, I see you've joined. Um, great. So I'm assuming you're going to read. Thank you. Yes, I will. I, I, the, you just didn't send me a Zoom link this time, so I was a bit confused. Well, I, I, I sent a second email with the link in it, but it's always the same link every week. Oh, OK. Uh, every all right. Month. Then. OK. So um, I'm glad um, you're here. Ken? Ken? Yes. I, I want to read also. Who was that? Elaine. Yeah, I thought it was. Elaine, I have you down. Oh, great. Thank you. I don't see you, Elaine. <laughs> I, I, I finished breakfast, Jean. <laughs> okay. okay. I'm going to shift over to you. There you are. Hi. <laughs> yeah. Weren't you having breakfast last time? Yes. <laughs> Well, I, I'm re I'm retired and Ten. I sleep late. <laughs> Ken, sounds yeah. good. Ken, yeah. yes. Tina. Oh, Tina. Hi, Tina. Hi, Hello, sorry. Tina. Hi, Hello, sorry, I came in um quite late. No, that's okay. I'll sign you up. Happy to read if there's time. Sorry, I'm late. I caught the last few. Thank you. So, so, Peg, um, are many of your 
family back there other than your children? In Nebraska like, or in yeah, California? like in California, or Nebraska, like cousins, aunts, uncles, etc. Everybody left. Oh, yeah. You know, my grandparents had seven children, so I had fourteen aunts and uncles, but everybody has left. So you're starting fresh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, it's such a funny place because um, everybody's everybody's connected somehow. And a couple of years ago, my elementary school boyfriend, who I hadn't been in touch with since elementary school, got my email address from my sister on Facebook and sent me a book by a man in Lincoln that was called The Least Interesting Place. And it's a beautiful <laughs> photography book. And so I bought two copies from him to send to my mom and my uncle. And his name is Matt Steinhausen. And I said, are you related to Randy Steinhausen, who is my high school boyfriend? And Randy is his uncle. And, oh, and that's just the way it goes. It's like everybody's connected somehow. And then he sent me a realtor and she's married to the family of a family that my, my parents were friends with. So, so it's just like, you know, you meet somebody and then, you know, <laughs> you have something in common. You have someone in common. Well, that's. <laughs> yeah, it's really unusual, but that's the way it happens. It is unusual. It's kind of like that in Minnesota, too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, is that in Lincoln, Nebraska? Are you in Lincoln or in your home? Or did you have a different hometown? Well, see, I grew up in, it's called Yankee Hill, and it was a rural area outside of Lincoln. Oh. And now Lincoln has expanded in every direction, and I hardly recognize it. It's so big now. And so Yankee Hill's kind of integrated into the city, and I'm outside of it in this house, and there's shopping malls all around, and it's very different. Wow. Middle America. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> must be a shock after Santa Barbara and all your poems about going to the water and you know the ocean and wow but you know um, my older sister flew in from Florida to drive with me and it was oh. a three-day drive and I had no idea how beautiful Utah and Colorado were oh yeah and then when we left Denver everything flattened out and I just love that in every direction. It was totally flat. And then the sky is like this big blue dome. It's you know, the sky looks totally different. It seems so huge when the land is flat. Yes. And so that's right. It's beautiful in its own way. And I used to think staring at the ocean was like staring at the plains of Nebraska. You know, you just get locked into it for inexplicable yeah. reasons. Okay. Guys, let's, um, let's crack on. Um, so we're coming back to... Uh, two. Nice. No, no, this one there. Sorry. Uh, okay, yeah, fine. So coming back to the um, open mic, uh, the normal rules apply. Um, if you've said you're going to read, I'll call on you in any particular order. Um, I'm also going to alternate between being in the room and being on Zoom. We've got more readers on Zoom than in the room, I think. Um, and the, yeah, as I say, the normal rules. So one poem, no epics, I mean it. Um, before that, Mike wanted just to say a couple of words. Yeah, I did, yeah. Um, Jeffrey, thank you so much um, for your featured slot. Um, I thought that was fantastic. Um, and I just wanted to um, highlight some of what Jeffrey shared with us for everybody in the room um, just to reflect on and think about in particular what struck me was the ekphrastic writing so that's writing inspired by work other works of art um, and for those of you who've not tried that I really encourage it because there's something we love words being spoken out loud here because as I say pretty much at every event that we do when somebody stands here and reads something they've written or something that's been written by another author something really special happens. Um, and that's a communication of feeling, thought, a, a moment captured in time. Um, and what's particularly lovely, I think, about ekphrastic writing, and I felt it very much so with your Coldplay piece, is that you seem to get this conversation between different pieces of art. Um, and then that itself has its own life among us as the listeners. 
Um, so I thought that was really lovely. Um, and yeah, thank you um, for that, Jeffrey. Um, and yeah, we're looking forward to this um, open mic tonight. We're probably going to go to someone on Zoom straight away, are we? Do we need to, I might need to do something. Thank you, Mike. Um, okay, so to start with, let us go straight to Janet, please, on Zoom. Can I ask you to unmute yourself? Okay, I just typed a thing in chat. I'm afraid oh. my, what's an epic before I start? What's what? An epic. Oh, an epic. <laughs> well, normally, normally, if you have to ask, um, you're all right. It's an epic. All right, just stop me when you it's think I... something that's super long, and if, uh, if you go super long, I'll hook you. I that's say... good. I don't mind being hooked. I would say anything over five minutes is probably getting oh. to epic. Would you say? I don't think mine's that long. <laughs> but you can, you can pull the hook anytime you want. Okay, it's called It Goes Deeper Than That. Right like I talk, he says, easy for him to say. I speak in pauses. It takes awkward moments to choose the words, cool words, not the others that I shove into my gut before they can get out. The startling thoughts, the stark truths, the phrases that end in awkward silence. It's safer to live in a field of soft consonants and funny vowels. Only oil wells grow there. They chatter to each other as they pump black goo. We're best friends, those wells and me. I get pumped on the way to my core. I'm not Johnny Appleseed. I'm not one of the good guys. Rotten is my middle name. You see me in polka dots, but I wear greasy overalls under it all. Take your lipstick and supposit it. I'm a digger. I don't try to be careful. Digging's my game, and I don't like to work. I'm covered with dirt. Messing around is my mission, and messes are my joy zone. I wonder if I spill on purpose. I do it often. In fact, I'm an expert. Practice makes perfect, you know, the muddier, the better. Alone tops every bucket list. I'm afraid of lonely, but I can't remember what it is. When the needle was lifted from the spinning disc, let me stop. And when these people are on Zoom, they're Americans. Pardon me? When the needle was lifted from the spinning disc and when nursery rhymes faded, my core. Oh, are you saying something? I'm not. Somebody is. Okay. When the Can needle. Sure everybody's muted. Me? What? It certainly sounds English. But first. All right, when the needle was lifted from the spinning disc and when nursery rhymes faded, my core got buried between my smile and tap shoes. Nobody helped me look for it. I was my only seeker. I've been seeking seekers ever since. Sometimes it's so dark that even I can't see. Where are the stars? They were Humpty Dumpty. It started in the 60s on podiums. It's moved to the playgrounds. Do you get the drift? I don't know where I'm drifting, but I don't care. But I do care. I told the genie my three wishes. Each one was the same. To write, to talk like I write. I yelled at the green bottle. And then I would flee to the hills where arrows can't reach me. That's my space, the hills, where I unlock the clouds and lock me inside. There, the sound of music would dizzy Daffy. It's in the hum of the breeze where the helium is, where the air is helium. Oxygen pumps through my nostrils, beating my heart to the rhythm of the foghorn. There I can yodel like I write. The universe hears me. She sends echoes to deaf ears and nothing matters. <laughs> Thank you, Janet. Thank you. Pardon me? What you make? Get me on. <laughs> oh, no. 
Okay, so um, thank you very much, Janet. That was lovely. We need to um, make sure the speaker cameras on the speaker here um, because I'm going to call on, looking around the room, um, I'm going to call on Rosie. Yay, Rosie. That one's really short. Okay. You have to find it. That's really terrifying. Okay. Um, Make okay. sure you're close to the mic, okay? Okay. Okay. Um, uh, fields and skies of open secrets, lights in a heavenly array. Eyes look up to hearts connected, eat every nightmare sent away. Nature's blades can all but cut me, moonlight in my hands, a dance with day. Time tells of unspoken temptations, all is frozen in your arms I lay. A moment of faltered courage, trembling smiles between us betray, piecing together fractured glass promises, forever just here I would stay. Well done, Rosie. Good work, thank you. Um, next, I'm going to stay in the room, I think. And I'm going to call on Steve. Right. You're staying about here? Yeah, close right. <laughs> right. Lovely. Okay. This um, little ditty is entitled In Inequity. Um, perhaps it is. The general state of the world, I wouldn't know. Inequity. Around the world, oh, sorry, I'll start again. Around the table sit 12 human souls. Unknown to each other, they wait. Some hold aspirations and hope, while some live in fear of their fate. Of those at the table, four shall have plenty, as so often is the case. For they have learned to take all they want at an ever increasing pace. They spare concerned looks, bear meaningful thoughts for the weak, the meek and the mild. But looks will not help, nor thoughts make things right for the mother who weeps for her child. The four can hear clearly the cries of the eight, but there's nothing that they can do to feed or to love or to offer some hope. So they think and look on in lieu of sharing their spoils, safe in the knowledge that others might be thinking too. The four would prefer not to sit at the table or even to share the same room because it's off-putting to witness such sights of disease and famine and gloom. They just want to be happy, and so they pretend that the eight are quite simply not there. They find it too easy to say, oh, how sad, and with crocodile tears to stare at those who, for the want of a drink, will fall silent by the end of the day. And so the four must look on while the eight slowly die. And then their seats can be taken away. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Um, okay, we'll go back on um, onto Zoom now and we'll call on Elaine. Please unmute yourself. Uh, can you hear me okay? Yes. Great. Uh, good morning, everybody, and good evening there. <laughs> Uh, Jeffrey, I wanted to thank you very much for your classic poems and for the lovely journey we, you, you took us on through California and Colorado. Uh, I, I've been to many of those places you mentioned, so I, I enjoyed your poems very much. And I'm going to read an acrostic poem, and it's about Remedio Zavaro, my favorite painter. She is a Surrealistic painter. My poem is called 
Adoration of Remedius Varro, born 1908, Catalonia, died 1963, Mexico City. She was surrealistic, as I mentioned. Vero, goddess, I wish I had known you in Spain and your cat by Mises looking up from inside the floorboards for blessing and the woman evolving from a chair then flowing into aurora of the lanes, hair and gown fluttering with radiance, your soul full of birds born of starlight. Yes, I wish I had known you all. I wish I had known you in Paris after you fled the useless chemist alchemist in his tower with razor eyes, weaving a black and white checkered cloak from the checkerboard tiled floor of his monk cell, homage to Franco. And later, after you also had fled Hitler, I wish I had known you in Mexico City, net in hand for catching stars with the nightingale moon already caught and nesting in its little cage. I would have wandered the Epi's lapis streets with you, your votary, till we found the vagabond flute player and his flaming feline familiar tucked into his unicycle cape. I would have eaten at your table where a galaxy of plates spun a halo around a candle illuminating shadows. I would have sailed upon your conversation in a boat of white heron. Vero, I ache for your baptism and the journeys you took on your upturned motorized umbrella through the misty wood to Orinoco, searching for solo music. Thank you. Thank you, Elaine. Uh, we'll stay on Zoom, I think. Um, and next up, we will call on Jean. Please unmute yourself and make yourself known. Hi. Hi, everyone. Jeffrey, thank you so much for your wonderful poems and to travel out of my room. <laughs> um, I have a very short poem. Um, it's titled Flight. Only when I flew out of myself did I become whole. Went over big in the room, Jean. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, and speaking of the room, we'll come back to the room and we will call on, um, I think, Vitali. Welcome back. Hello. Uh, thank you very much, Jeffrey. I am really, I would like to really thank uh, all for the wonderful atmosphere and what I'm going to read used to be song lyrics in a different language, my song lyrics, which I have translated into English. It's not my first language, but I'll give it a try because this is a wonderful international event where I feel that borders between people are not real. Mm -hmm. So I will try. Thank you. It is frozen like morning. It is blind like the daylight. It's a secret decaying of spots of the blood. Living warmth comes from nowhere and is set out by poison. It's forgotten emotion that's true for the heart. Or the night is on fire that's eternally fading, like the sunset that turns the next dawn into red. And I'm hearing the sound of the song that's not ending. It is calling my soul and it's not leaving my head. Those who come from the doorways, who were then first and second, all are going now, some were afraid of the dawn. They were running for someone. They are now all the last ones. There are no ones, and now they are all on their own. But my soul is so tired. It is wounded forever. And my ocean is dry. It's forgotten its waves. I'm tempted whilst going by the drama of heaven. But the light of the day makes it return to its grave. Trees without leaves asking. 
for disastrous failure, for the death of the memory of flourishing days, and the lights on the road for those who drive to Abyssa, trying on the last breath on the poles on the way. But I won't become mortal. I won't stop further trying. I'm not leaving the meaningless passion for dream. And your cursing smile can't break the connection between me and the soul and the memory of your shining beauty. Thank you. <laughs> You could feel that. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Vitaly. Um, next up, I think we'd go back to Zoom, and I'd like to call on um, Sue. Susan. Right. Yeah. Now it works. <clears throat> Vitaly is a very hard act to follow. That's a bunch of like, actually, I'd love to see the words printed in English. Just a minute, Sue. So, Sue, so you're not very clear. The uh, something you're breaking up a bit. Can you get near okay, the mic? It's, perhaps? Um, it's just started raining here. So, can you hear me now? Yeah, great. Okay, okay. So, what I said was Vitaly is a very hard act to follow. I'd love to see it printed. What he read. Can you hear me? I. It's really raining hard. No, it's can, good. Can you hear me okay? Yes, we can hear you fine. Okay, fine. Uh, so the title of this harks back to my original university major, which was geology. And my, my poem is this. I have I've not written a poem since I was a child, so bear with me. The Portuguese called it Formosa, the beautiful island. An island where great plates of the crust of the earth collide, where the Okinawa plate meets the Philippine plate, where the Sunda plate meets the Eurasian plate, where the Eurasian plates slides chuttering below the Philippine plate, and the earth quakes, and green mountains are folded up to the sky, while China on the Eurasian plate prepares to rule it all, now subject to such an Asian fate, will Taiwan fall? Thank you, Sue. I think that's the first for me, um, a poem about plate tectonics. So uh, well done. Uh, I'd like to come back to the room now, I think. Oh, no, I won't. we'll stay on Zoom, we'll stay on Zoom. Let's invite Britta, please, to uh, unmute yourself. Hi there, righty ho. I've got a very short high bun for you, so here we go. Maybe that's just what I want to do. I might as well begin by saying I don't know. I follow crumbs, consonants, these strong, stubborn columns that keep vowels in tight cages like wild animals. They don't behave in predictable ways. I don't know the ancient, the guarded, the sacred. I follow sounds and rhythms, beat and bait for hook, line and sinker, simple souls that can't help but speculate. Keen, always eager to add to the list of dawn, dusk, undeserved magic. And I forgive myself for not having done more than that. A life in words, pearl, wonderful coincidence, grit turned into stars. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Britta. Thank you. Um, I'd like to come back to the room. Mike, sorry about this darting about. Oh, there we are. And bye, guys. Um, and I'd like to invite. Uh, Tom, please. Hello, this is my first hybrid time here. That's yeah. very exciting. And um, yeah, got a small found poem for you. Um, it's called Guy is a Fist Fight. Guy is a Fist Fight. 
clearly winning, sobbing and wailing the whole time. Guy is getting his ass kicked, but talking shit about the other guy as if he's winning. Guy is reading in detention, whilst lost fit so find parts outside and words follow suit guy with buck in hand is traveling through lives trying to escape his own guy is a moment in time of escapism for stoics tired of sobbing and wailing and getting his arts kicked whilst believing he's winning thank you <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Tom. Thank you very much. Um, okay, I think still in the room while we've got the, the screen on, I think we'll go Barry. Welcome back, Barry. Right, um, hello, everybody in, uh, in the room and in the US. Um, Jeffrey mentioned the South Downs Poetry Festival that uh, he'd been part of. It's still going on. It's maybe a bit too far for you to come to from America, yeah. but the, uh, the people in the room here um, just jog your uh, memories and thoughts that jazz and poetry is playing at the jailhouse in Arundel on Monday, the 22nd of August, and that Blakefest, Radical Visionaries, Blake Turner and Shelley is at Petworth House on the 24th of September. But back here in Chichester, National Poetry Day will be celebrated with guest Maggie Sawkins. We're on the web, so look us up. The poem I want to read tonight was, um, was commissioned actually by the Culture Spot to help launch the Chichester District Arts Festival in March. It's still going on. And we had a brief to do something environmental, ecological, and to think perhaps positively not just look at the problems. That's quite a challenge, really. So um, that took me back to an incident in my past with, again, with America in mind, just saying that the potteries are located in a Midlands industrial city here um, in Stoke-on-Trent, not one of the most beautiful places uh, to go to, not like the South Downs. Um, and a part of that city is called Etruria. Sounds wonderful, doesn't it? It was actually the Wedgwood works for the potteries. Route 66 revisited. When I came down to Etruria back in 1966, on my journey to university at Kiel, I did not find classical civilization just the smoking bottle kilns of the potteries, the sheds and stacks of Wedgwood and Spode, and an ever-present smear of gray and black, the unfathomable depths of the old canal, a gash in the city's arteries and heart. But back in 66, something's changed, England, won the World Cup in extra time. A new youthful eye sparked the 60s, and the air was gradually scoured clear. The scum and viscous sludge drained. The hedgerows replanted with hawthorn and alder. The floating pennywort, nettles, and parsleys regrafted, and the roach and carp, the voles and damselflies reclaimed the wastelands and the waterways, while the green mating lights of the glowworms rekindled hope sometime after I left Etruria, heading out along the way on Route 66. <laughs> Thank you, Barry. Thank you. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm resisting telling you my memories of 67, the summer of 67, but and I, I, if I start, haul me off. Okay, I'm, I'm going back to Zoom. Um, 
I'm pleased to say that um, December's featured reader is the lady I'm going to ask to read next, um, Peg. Thank you. And thank you, Jeffrey, for your reading. Um, I really felt like your sense of observation and poetic expression was inspiring. So thank you. Um, and Ken, I want to hear about your summer of 67, please. <laughs> I, I have a short poem. And it was inspired by a reading um, when I read that the London Times had read an obituary on the death of common sense. And the poem is titled, The London Times ran an obituary on the death of common sense. The same day a family of long legs completed their evolution high in the corner of my shower. The male off stage watched with due diligence as the neatly, nearly invisible milky buds surrounding his patient mate blossomed into a constellation of tiny falling stars repelling from the ceiling, their skills exceeding reason. Thank you. Thank you, Peg. Um, next up, please, again on Zoom, let's go with Tina. Hi everyone, and thank you, Jeffrey. I didn't hear all of your poems because I came a bit late, but I did enjoy the ones that I did hear, so thank you. Um, this is another short poem and it's called At the Seaside. It's quite simple. You splash cold water at your little daughter. She says, no daddy, stop daddy. She doesn't like it, it's cold and uncomfortable. She says no three, four times and still you splash her. Still you laugh and still you splash her. How will your daughter learn to know that no means no, even if the other person is enjoying it? How will she learn if her daddy does not stop when she cries no? Thank you, Tina. Thank you very much. We'll go back in the room now and um, let me invite Roz. Welcome back. Um, hello. Uh, so last time I uh, read a poem about the ravaging impact of clothes moths. And this is my companion poem, very different. And it's a celebration of Sussex butterflies. The parched air stings as we aim for the top, trampling through swathes of bleach brown meadow grass. Gravelly paths stain our shoes a dusty grey and niggling sharp stones lodge between our toes. We puff and pant upwards through the yews whilst a bitter sun flays the back of our necks. Pausing for breath, we take a half-hearted glug of lukewarm replenishment take stock. Here, moth eye serves us well, as we detect that glint of colour, that faint, frail flicker, as the long grass landing strips, sways, cargo light balanced, wings outstretched, basking, or flotting the air with dips and dives, the fields alive. The orange filigree fritillary, that flitters, then plunges, then loops the loop, an aerial acrobat veering through trees, then perching, wings pulled to like sleeping lids, luminescent understripes of pearly green. The brimstone, acid curls of nuclear waste inscribed in arcs on the brilliant sky, the peacock with its boastful eyes, the slash of shivering, swaggering red, murky umber or scarlet of angle wings, the comma with its ragged fluted lines and underneath bright white punctuation marks. The tortoise shell, rouge with tiger stripes, cream and bold black fringed with small blue bindi dots and most delicate, most pale, the chalk hill wings smudged with shimmery powder paint and dusky charcoal. At its core, 
soft tufts of baby pastel blue, a silvery iridescence with dark black eyes, like surprised full stops. Butterflies everywhere. They flutter, they dance, they fight, they swoop and swirl in glorious flight, and we are wrapped like five-year-olds with their fragile grace. Thank you, Ros. Thank you very much. Um, next up, we'll go back to Zoom and invite Alexandra. Um, if you want to share the screen, Alexandra, that's... Uh, yes, I do, please. Okay. Yeah. Um, Alexandra's in Greece. Give me a moment. Try sharing the screen now. I can't. I can't share. You can't share. Okay. No. Do no. Do that. Okay. Could you try now? Yep. I think you've got it this time. Okay. Okay. okay thanks. This is a romantic poem. Can you see the graphics going by? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Flying four. So long as there is vision, so long as it is true and alive, so long as there is flying, so long as we can feel it inside, then we can stand the journey, then we can understand the journey, then we can feel the wonder of the flight through turbulent and gentle seas, then we can rely on our inner strength then we can be as warm and sweet and relaxed and balanced as we can be, transcending all judgment and blame, transcending all resentment and pain, accepting the ebb and flow of our emotions, letting me, you in, letting us in, into our magical world, transforming each other teaching each other to give and receive higher love and pleasure, higher flying. Because we know, because we know, and no one can take that knowing away from me, you, from us. And we know I'm your here, we're here, in the sweet blessed realm, honoring our visions as best we can, all through the night, all through the day, higher and higher, deeper and deeper, steady, destined, wild, wonderful, golden cords connection, a sweet invisible power holding us together, flowing between us, traversing all waves, knowing me, pleasing me so well, knowing you, pleasing you so well, your energy flowing with my energy, strong, soft, my energy flowing with your energy, soft, strong, feeling all your love and kindness, all your desire and pleasure coming up inside me, feeling all my warmth and sweetness, all my desire and pleasure opening to you, receiving magical, indescribable moments, deeper and deeper, higher and higher, Renewable love, renewable romance, renewable relationship, developing sensuality, quiet passion. Our insights, our perceptions, progressing, magnifying, discovering satisfaction, fulfillment with each other endlessly. So steady, so destined, so wild, so wonderful, flying together, higher and higher, deeper and deeper. Directing our thoughts away from the shadows, directing them towards the light, lighter and lighter. Making love inside a turquoise bath, taking me on the turquoise horse. Feeling our visions inside us, feeling the flying inside us, taking us up our paths. 
deeper and deeper, higher and higher. Thank you. Thank you, Alexandra. Thank you. Um, okay, next up, he's been darting around, so let's see if we can slow him down and get him to read us something, Mike. Well, maybe we won't ever stop him <laughs> darting around. Um, okay, um, yeah, this is quite disorientating. But anyway, here we are. Um, <laughs> so, hello everybody on Zoom, and hello everybody in the room. Um, this is a poem that I wrote, um, I can't remember, it was about four weeks ago. Um, and um, it's about, it's, I think it's about what's going on with um, our planet. It's called Fever by Degrees. <clears throat> Don't for a moment think the feeling of unease you have about the trees burning is not an emergency warning. Sometimes the dawning of sanity is forged in the yearning for relief. Sometimes the wheels keep turning anyway. The fires keep burning anyway, until the host is free. In the quiet still gaps of peace amid the war, don't for a moment dream you did not somehow see what this fever by degrees was doing all this for. Thank you, Mike. Uh, Christine. Are you Christine? Please come. <laughs> um, I really should be composing something about Afghanistan and the poor plight of the poor ladies and girls there, but still. I look back at um, one I'd written a little while ago. The train moves on. I see the backs of houses. A woman reads by lamplight. A boy plays air guitar. And before her computer screen, a girl poses. In a kitchen, a man weeps. We pass floodlit industrial units, shadowy farm buildings and dark tussocky fields. A street light gleams over a wet road. We slow to a stop. Doors bleep, travellers leave. The train moves on. There's a blur of hedges and sombre moonlit stretches, and then a glare of neon. Oh gosh, there was a glare of neon. Asda, Comet, B and Q. In snaking lines, empty trolleys wait. Now it's my destination a clatter of suitcase, suitcase wheels across the footbridge. Why was he weeping? Was it anger or shame, regret or loneliness? I glance back, but the train has moved on. Mm -hmm. Christine, thank you very much. So we're at about the end. Uh, I just want to check on Zoom if everybody who wanted to read has read, um, if anybody on Zoom would like to read, please unmute yourself and yell. Uh, oh, Karen. Didn't uh, know you I'll read. Yeah, go, Kaza. Okay. Uh, first, I want to say kudos to you, Ken and Mike, for the way you have it all set up. It's, it's really working well. Thank you. So, <laughs> well done. Um, okay. So you can hear me, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. OK, thank you. All right, this is um, uh, Jeffrey. Thank you for your reading. I, I really enjoyed it also. And uh, it inspired me to read uh, the one, uh, uh, an ekphrasis poem. I have a hard time saying that word. Um, that I wrote, and it, it's based on a poem that uh, I inherited from my parents when they passed away. It's called um, Girl in Blue. Her place of pride above my parents' fireplace 
purchased years ago for that special spot. The young woman's gaze intrigued mom and dad, reminded them of me, they said, in my hippie days. Wedged in the corner of a blue velvet couch, hip-hugging jeans and rust-colored turtleneck, cold black eyes look outward, see only inward. Thoughts so personal, so private, no one else can know. Lives with us now, an unwelcomed guest. Unhappy and depressed, says my husband. Quietly daydreaming, I reply. She's attacked and defended again and again. Truth is, I see this girl's inner sadness, alone and lost in that tightly framed space, the unsure sense of something amiss, not knowing where life will take her. I'd like to release her from her plight, reveal her questions will be answered. What is deeply buried, unearthed, released, won't be easy, but she will do it. Ah, uh, but perhaps it's time to find another painting, a pleasant one with hills and trees and cloud-bearing skies. Discard this prickly reminder of my past, replace her with something we both enjoy. Yet I hold back. If I take her down, where would she go? Who would take care of her? <laughs> what would I lose of myself if she's no longer there? Mm. Thank you, Karen. Thank you very sure much. Thing. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think we're done. I'm going to read one. Um, Is it Cosmo? Um, Cosmo has already. I can only remember one of my first. Ah, six lines long. Do you want? Yes, of course. Please. Yeah, Cosmo. Thank you. Thank you. If I can remember that much. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 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 I'll go down. Okay. So nobody wants to read the poems that I write. Nobody wants to listen to the stories that I recite. Oh, I should weep and wail and beat my fevered brow, or better still, put on my coat and head for the pub right now. <laughs> Which, oddly enough... <laughs> Okay, um, well, I'm going to read one. Uh, so those of you, I think there were two of you, who were in Ventura in June will have heard me read this in Ventura, um, but I'm not sure that I've read it here. So it's called Ven. Simply because we were young and you made me laugh and you made me cry, I loved you then because there was no reason not to. Oh. Oh. There you go. Um, thank you so much to everybody on Zoom. It's wonderful to see you all again, your happy smiling faces. Um, please join us again in a month's time. Um, those of you in the room, please come again at the beginning of September 7th, I think is the first Wednesday in here. Um, try and come early if you want to uh, get something from the cafe. Uh, I just tell you that last time we had 50 people, so it was a bit of a cram in here, um, and a long queue was snaking out of the cafe. So do come early um, if you're going to come to the reading in September. Um, it's wonderful to see you all in the room again. Thank you so much for coming. Um, what else was I going to say? Barry, I was going to ask you, is there a reading at New Park Centre coming up? Yeah, is there one yeah. on the 31st, is it? No, it's... Uh... 24th. 24th. Of, oh, of September then, not August. September, yeah. Oh, right. It's the Sorry, 21st. It's the 21st. 21st of September. So it's 21st. And I'm, I'm the guest poet, Cherry. You are Cherry Taylor, yes. 
Well, well done, Cherry. Thank you. That's great. Well, I'm glad. So <laughs> we've got that date sorted out. So she'll be, she'll be I, there, Barry. And I, and I was interested in the people that are from Nebraska. That's because Peg. The cover, yeah. The cover of my poetry book, which is called Stepping on Shadows, was by the photographer who lives in Blair, Nebraska. Yeah. Which is about 50 miles, 50, 60 miles from Lincoln. I don't know, but can you hold it up? Can we see it? This is ja he's Jake Olson. And he's a photographer that photographs in Nebraska, very well known, lots of covers for books. I didn't know that when, when I contacted him and he he let me use it if I sent him a copy of the book. Oh, excellent, excellent. That sounds yeah. great. That's me. Okay. I'm sorry, I'm Invisible. Thanks again to everybody. Great to see you. See you a soon. Evening. Thank care. you very much. Bye. Thank you, Thank you, you Kian. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye, everybody. Thanks, Kian. Bye. Bye. bye, Peg. Bye, Jean. Bye, Terry. <laughs> bye bye.